all the plagues, so don't worry about a thing. <laughs> We're all safe and good right here, amen? This is where the spot is, where you're protected, so... Uh, we're on part three of uh, how to hear uh, God speak to you and how he speaks to you and I. And today it's how to receive guidance. Uh, how to receive guidance from God. Uh, it's pretty simple stuff, but again, uh, very valuable to us. Uh, when we need guidance, we need direction, uh, how God speaks to us. So let's pray, and then we'll get right into our study, and uh, I'll let you go home and uh, just relax and enjoy your day. How's that? It's interesting, isn't it? Uh, well, I'm not going to get into it, but I'm just delighted you're all here. Amen. Amen. And to fill the church with your spirit, your love, and your joy. Heavenly Father, I just thank you that you are our healer. You're our protector. You're our comforter. You're our joy. You're our peace. Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for each one of us, to shed his blood not only to redeem us, but to protect us and to bless us. So, Father, we thank you for our gathering as a family today, coming together to just study your word and to be even more equipped than we were before we came in. So, Holy Spirit, I ask your anointing and your blessing. Holy Spirit, be our uh, guide on the word. Illuminate the word. May it come to life today. And I thank you for today is the day that the Lord hath made, and we're all going to just rejoice and be glad in it yeah. and be thankful in it today. Thank you, Father, for all your blessing. Thank you for this time together. And I ask your blessing on it in Jesus' mighty and powerful name. Amen. Well, let's look at Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1. That will be kind of our text for this morning. It says, I will climb up into my watchtower now and wait to see what the Lord will say to me and how he will answer my complaint. <laughs> it's not a request. He's complaining. Now, that's not for you and I to be complainers, right? but uh, that we can go up and ask God something. Then the Lord said to me, write my answer in large, clear letters on a tablet so that a runner can read it and tell everyone else. Not only tell you, but tell everybody else that has these questions going on. But these things I plan won't happen right away. Very important, but these things um, that he plans for us may not happen right away. Slowly, steadily, surely, the time approaches when the vision will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, wait patiently, for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. What's that telling us? God's timing. Absolutely everything is in God's timing. So just be slow, be patient, don't be in a hurry. Look at the proud. They trust in themselves and their lives are crooked, but the righteous will live by their faith. Amen? And I, I, when I looked at this, I thought, boy, we asked God for some things, and um, he makes it abundantly clear it won't happen right away. Now, some things, interestingly enough, they do happen right away, don't they? I mean, I'm sure you've had prayers answered almost immediately, and then there's prayers that took seven years. And I mean, there, there's this time frame that goes on. But in the process of that, we never need to lose faith, do we? Got to keep our faith, keep our trust in God, things will work out. So... Uh, as we think about it, I'm going to just talk about five different ways that you and I can tune into God, five, five very simple ways uh, where we can receive guidance from God. And um, there's all kinds of questions you might have. I mean, you probably have questions right now you want to ask God. Things are on your mind. So I'm not going to go through a myriad of them. You can kind of think it for yourself, these different questions you want to ask God. So Roman numeral number one, it just leads us into this. How to request guidance from God. How do I request guidance from God? And so there's three prerequisites, if you will, to receive guidance from God. Number one, very important, you must realize that God cares about the details of our lives. God cares about every single detail of our life. Sometimes we may not think so, but I mean, we're talking about every detail of your life. Nothing is left out. So we have to understand that. That's just a, it's a given fact. And so the Bible says in Matthew 6, 31, So don't worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you are, you uh, basically need them, that you need these things. God already knows in advance. And so we have to understand God cares about every detail of our life. So just think about that just for a moment. Every single detail of your life. Sometimes we get caught up in the health. 
and well-being of ourselves, but I mean, we're talking about every single solitary thing. Our night's sleep. Everything. All of that. He cares about it all. Number two, you need to ask a specific question. Oftentimes with God, it's kind of important that we ask a question, and it's specific. It's not, um, you know, kind of flowery or whatever. We just ask what's on our mind. Here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I need to know. Here's what I got a question about. It's plain, it's simple, and it's very specific. I'm dealing with this issue, this issue, or this issue, and I, I need an answer. I need an answer to that. And in Matthew 7, 7, it says, ask, and it will be given to you. Now, again, I don't know how long it's going to take to get to you, but it's going to get to you. So ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be open. Amen? So, I mean, we just have to ask a specific question. And then number three is vitally important. Believe he wants to answer you. You got to believe that when you ask all these things, you got to believe that God wants to answer your questions. He wants to speak to you. He wants to have fellowship with you. He wants to have communion with you. And so we have to believe that when we ask, God wants to answer our prayers, our petitions, and even our complaints. All right. So um, let me just say, don't be a complainer. But if you have a complaint, you can bring that one, but don't keep it up, all right? <laughs> Just make your request known to God. James chapter 1 and verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God. Now, that's something I think we need to ask every day, quite frankly. Remember I talked about kingdom wisdom, kingdom peace, kingdom power. I speak that to myself every day. Thank you, Lord, that you have given me kingdom wisdom, kingdom peace, kingdom power. And I added another one to me personally authority. I want authority over the enemy. I want power to resist. I'm, 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 I'm not off track. I'm just going to share with what's, what's going on. And so it comes, if you lack wisdom, just ask God. If something's going on in your life, just ask God. Just, it's that simple. Who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. You must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind, okay? So when you ask something, believe. And again, it's God's timetable. Remember that. It's God's timetable, not ours. So Roman numeral number two, five steps to help us receive guidance from God. Five simple steps that I'm going to share with you, Okay. Number one, withdraw. Number one, withdraw. Now you notice what happens with Habakkuk in chapter 2. It says, I will climb up into my watchtower now. Right? Then I'm going to wait and see what the Lord will say to me and how he will answer my complaint. So, the, so A, the, the thing that we have to remember is the very first thing to do is get alone in a quiet place. Get alone with God in a quiet place. That might be in your truck or your car driving down the freeway. It's the only place where you have a little bit of peace of mind. Could be in your bathroom. Could be the bedroom. Could be in the hallway. It could be any place. But it's vitally important, just like Habakkuk climbed up into the watchtower. And incidentally, the watchtower in Hebrew is symbolic for simply getting away. It's a, it's a symbolism. It really means I'm going to get away. I'm going to get off by myself. Uh, I'm going to get alone, and I'm going to eliminate all the distractions that surround me. That's what the watchtower really represents. I'm going to climb up there so nobody bothers me. No one wants to get up there. It's my own personal private place. And when I thought about that, I thought about all of our distractions. You know, today... Those little iPad things um, and, and the phone, everybody. What, are you, what is the thing you hold in your hand and, and you're on it 90% of your life? It's a cell phone, but it has all these things on there and all the apps and everything under the sun. And you spend nine hours steady on it, punching these little buttons. And what is it? It's a dumb phone. <laughs> a smartphone. Okay. Believe it or not, that's a tiny distraction, isn't it? Right? And sometimes we are captivated with this thing in our face. And sometimes you have to put it down, put it on mute, 
or turn it off. Just that one thing, let alone all the other distractions that you and I encounter. And there's, there's a lot of them. Um, but I, I read a really fascinating story about um, uh, Susan Wellesley. And um, Wesley, pardon me, Susan Wesley. And uh, Susan had 18 kids. Think about that just for a half of a minute. She had, Susan Wesley had 18 children, right? And of course we know about Charles Wesley and John Wesley. Um, Charles Wesley wrote all kinds of uh, hymns and songs and I mean hundreds of them. And then Charles, uh, I mean, uh, pardon me, John actually started the Methodist denomination. You knew that or did you not know that? So he had, he had 16 more kids that were whatever they did. So just think about this just for a moment. Here's Susan Wesley, a very spiritual woman. How in the world can she have a quiet time? <laughs> yeah. So what she would do, she'd get in the middle of the living room, she would sit in her rocking chair, and she would take her apron and throw it over her head. The moment she took the apron and threw it over her head and she was in the rocking chair, she was not to be disturbed. The children were not allowed to talk to her, ask her questions, or say anything to her. That was her, if you will, watchtower. That was her spot. So you got 18 kids running around. I don't know if the apron would sound, drawn out all the sound, but isn't that interesting? She found her quiet place. And the kids honored that. And she did it every single day, seven days a week. And she'd sit in her rocking chair, throw her apron over her head, and it doesn't say how long her quiet time was. It was like, do not disturb sign. Leave me alone. And she had that quiet time. So it's valuable for you and I to withdraw someplace, be alone, and have that quiet, quiet place where we can be with God. And that's on a daily basis. And they think about our lives, they say, I, I simply can't do that. Yes, you can. It's a matter of where you want to go, how quiet you want to be. And there's something really significant about simply being quiet and being still. It's like, now, isn't that nice? Just quiet. Pretty cool, isn't it? Having that quiet place. Luke 5, 16 says, but Jesus, Jesus often withdrew to a lonely place. And what did he do? Prayed. But he went to that quiet place. He went to that watchtower. Whatever your watchtower is, you want to go there on a regular, daily basis to be alone with God and allow him to speak to you say whatever he needs to say or ask whatever questions you need to ask. That's the time to do it. And then number two, wait. The second thing is wait. You're in a, you withdraw, you're in a quiet place, and just wait on the Lord. Just wait on him. Habakkuk 2 one says, I will climb up into my watchtower now and do what? Wait. Just wait. Now, A, waiting means to calm our thoughts and our emotions down. Calm our thoughts and our emotions down. And you might want to write this down. Hurry and worry can kill prayer. Worry and hurry can kill prayer. We need to be still, we need to be present, we need to hear from God. And oftentimes, um, like at night, uh, some of you may have an easy time going to sleep, maybe not. But one of the other things that I do at night now is, besides praying and just kind of going to sleep as I'm praying, um, I say, Bill, just relax, buddy. Just relax. I'm laying in bed. Just, just relax. Let everything go. Just lay there and relax. And you'd be amazed and what the Holy Spirit does when you just relax. And you don't get in a hurry, you're laying in bed, don't worry about sleeping, not sleeping, don't worry about anything. Just relax in the Lord. Just be at peace in Him. 
Now, the question comes up, how do I calm my thoughts and how do I calm my emotions down? How, how do I do that? So A is relax yourself. I just told you one of the things to do. Just relax. I can't relax. Well, you better learn then. You better learn just to relax. Um, how many of you uh, sometimes catch yourself doing this? You know what I mean? You don't even think about it. All. I'll sit in my nice rocking chair, and before I know it, my shoulders are up. I'm tight as a tick. I thought, Bill, what are you doing? Just relax. Take five deep breaths. Five deep breaths and just simply relax. Psalms 46.10, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be wait in silence. Wait in silence. Psalm 62, 5, my soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. And the third thing that you can do is focus your attention on the wonders of God. I, I, I just look outside, I look at this, and I just think, boy, you created all of this. Wow, the trees, the grass, the bushes, the weeds. <laughs> you, 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 you created all of that. Wow. And you look around and think, man, oh, man, oh, man, God, you are incredible. You are the creator of all things. And we should be in awe of God and the wonders of God. So that kind of helps you focus and kind of gets you, when you're waiting, some things that are spiritually positive to do. And number three is watch. Watch. Hebrew, Habakkuk 2 one says, I will climb up into my watchtower now and wait to what? See. See. I want to watch and see, Father, what you're going to do. And A, as you watch, you will let God give you a mental picture or a vision. Very important. And you can, you can have a mental picture or a vision all the time. All the time. As you have your petitions before God, you're asking God questions, you're waiting, and you're being patient. God can give you a picture in your mind or a vision in your mind. Okay? And, this, and you can have this all the time. All the time. It's not some unique, special time, once 20 years, you get this vision or this, or, or, or this vision or this picture. Look at Ephesians 1.18, and I'm going to give you an illustration here. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. Okay? That's something your eyes would be spiritually open. Okay, stay with me here just for a minute. How many have read the story of David and Goliath? When you read the story of David and Goliath, he goes down, he gets five smooth stones. He goes there and he gets a slingshot out and he looks around and he sees Goliath. Goliath's got one eye in the middle of his forehead or whatever, you know, wherever you want the Goliath to be, all right? And then he takes the whirls it around, smacks him in the head. He falls down, gets a sword, cuts off his head. Good story, right? No, Goliath, it was not a happy ending, was it? <laughs> now, now just think about this just for a moment. When you read it by yourself, it's a simple question. Do you envision David? Do you see him when it says he went down and picked up five smooth stones? Do you kind of see him going by the brook and picking up a stone? Do you see him running toward Goliath? And you're just reading it, right? And he throws and slings it around, smacks him in the head, runs to him, cuts off his head. When you read it, how many of you actually see it? Think about it. D -d Don't you? You get a mental picture. And you're simply reading this, and it, it comes alive, doesn't it? And you have a mental picture of David. You probably think about, I wonder how big that stone was that he picked up, and he put five of them, four more in his pocket. Wow. And you're seeing that as you're reading it, correct? That's what this is talking about. 
We see visions and dreams of God every single solitary day. When you ask God a question, you can actually visually see him answering it. You can see the person you're praying for. How many of you pray for somebody and all of a sudden their face pops up in your face? Well, I didn't mean to say it that way. But it pops up, right? We get a mental picture. We get a vision of them all the time. So it's not something that's very unusual. For you and I, it's very common. So as we wait patiently on God, he'll give us visions and dreams, and he'll make pictures very clear. He may even show you how he's going to answer your prayer, how he's going to do it. All he's saying is, hey, I want you to go to a quiet place. Relax yourself. I'll talk to you. But it's finding that quiet place, isn't it? It's finding our watchtower where we can go. Or go buy an apron and just throw it over your head. Or go get a towel and throw it over your head. <laughs> Whatever it takes to get a quiet place. And then number four, this is important, write. Write. Uh, Donna Reed couldn't be here today, and so I know she doesn't mind me saying this, but um, she emailed me uh, back about um, a, a dream she had or a vision that she had. And then she also reminded me, said, and uh, Bill, I journal everything. Now, I may be stepping out of line here, but she, she journals. And so oftentimes, like Habakkuk 2.2, 2, the Lord said to me, write my answer in large, clear letters on a tablet. Write things down. One of the things you might enjoy in life is to start journal your spiritual journey. Make a journal. A lot of times, I can't remember things, so I write a lot of stuff down. Um, I write a lot of stuff down. Somebody was astonished when I told them that I have my fishing journal and I have every day that I went fishing since 1984 in a notebook. In a notebook. I can tell you about last year when I first hurt my back. It's all in my journal. And I can go back to that journal and remember what I caught, how I caught it, what the weather was like, what the water temperature was like, how I felt getting the boat in and out of the dock. All, I journal all that. Now, that's just me. I'm a little weird. And also, I train. And I make a yearly packet. And anybody I train, I give them this packet, and I give them the entire workout so they can work out with me. And I encourage them, write down every number you lift. How many times you could lift it, how much weight it was, and then you can go back five years later and see your progress. I have almost all my workouts journaled. I know when I had the heaviest lift, the most I could lift with 20 pounds, you know, for 20 reps. I got all that journaled. And so it's important to keep notes, if you will. Write stuff down that God gives you. Don't try to remember it. Write it down. Date it. Put it in your file. Hear God talk to me file. Keep a record of it. You'll be amazed at what you find if you just keep notes. All right? And then lastly, worship. Worship the Lord with all your heart. Number five. We can't thank God too much. Can't do it. Worship him. Thank him. Praise him. All day, every day. Psalms 34.1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. He heard me and deliver me from all my fears, everything. So let me encourage you, God will give you all the guidance you need every single solitary day of your life if you simply go to a quiet place, your watchtower, and talk to him, and then be silent, and allow him to speak to you in visions and dreams and pictures, and then journal it. Start something new this year. If you haven't done it, just journal stuff. And so uh, 
Anyway, that's what's on my mind today. Now it's off my mind. I'm going home. I'm going to have oatmeal. <laughs> Forget all that. Let's pray. <laughs> Father, thank you so much for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, I thank you for this word that you give us instructions and make clear, very, very clear how we can get specific guidance and directions from you, how you speak to us, how you lead us, how you guide us, and how you direct us. All we have to do is find that quiet place and then just seek you, seek you, and ask all these kind of questions and also offer up your complaints. Father, thank you that you're willing to listen to all of that and to answer us at your timetable. I just thank you for everyone here today. Bless them, watch over them, and protect them. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.